Welcome back! In this lesson we are going to learn about the exponential transform method which is one of the variance reduction techniques for Monte Carlo neutron transport simulations. The exponential transform method is designed for a special type of problems in which we are primarily interested in a very small part of a very big system. So imagine you have a big system like this and uh, we are only interested for instance in a detector response and we place the detector uh, at some part of the system. Now the volume of the detector is very small compared to the volume of the whole system. So you may have to simulate uh, many billions of neutron histories in order to get lucky and to get a few of the neutron histories to pass through the volume of this small detector. So the aim of the exponential transfer method is to change the sampling rules for the neutron transport simulation in such a way that the neutron histories will be more likely to end up in the small volume of the detector. And of course do not forget that every time we change the rules for sampling any of the random variables uh, during the neutron transport simulation we need to compensate this by uh, adjusting the neutron statistical weight. So what is the idea of the method? And before I explain the idea let me just redraw the system with the small detector. So the idea of the exponential transfer method is to bias the transition kernel. So the transition kernel is the probability density function that is uh, describing the distance between the collisions. So by biasing the transition kernel we can change the distribution of the distances between the neutron collisions. Let's have a look at a neutron history now. Let's say that uh, a neutron is born here, so it's a fission neutron, and a direction is assigned to it. It's sampled uh, randomly. So let's say that uh, by chance the neutron is assigned a direction towards the detector. At this moment the standard transition kernel is used in uh, sampling the distance to the next collision. So let's say that we decide to simulate the next collision at this point. So we move the neutron to this new site. Now the idea of the exponential transformation method is that the transition kernel is biased in such a way that when the neutron flies towards the detector the distance to the next collision will on average be larger than when it's uh, sampled by the standard transition kernel. So let's say that when we apply the exponential transformation method on this case the distance to the next collision would be for instance twice as large. So it would uh, come here. The neutron would not move uh, here but all the way until here. And on the contrary when the neutron uh, is moving away from the detector then the distances uh, on average become smaller when the exponential transformation method is applied. So instead of sampling the next collision here it would be sampled for instance in the middle of this distance. So how can the method uh, bias the transition kernel in such a way that we obtain this effect? Well let's have a look at the transition kernel first. The transition kernel equals the product of the total macroscopic cross-section and the exponential function with the exponent minus sigma t s where s is the distance to the next collision. So as you can see there are actually not many uh, quantities that can be changed here. 
it's only the total macroscopic cross section that we can uh, manipulate but that's quite enough you see if we know that the neutron is flying towards our detector then uh, we can for instance reduce the total macroscopic cross section so if we reduce it the distances between the collisions will become larger on the contrary when we know that the neutron is flying away from the detector then we can increase the total macroscopic cross section so in this way the material will kind of become more dense and the distances between collisions will shrink so in order to figure out in which way we should change the total macroscopic cross section whether we should decrease it or increase it we need to know whether the neutron is approaching the, the detector or whether it's flying away so one way of knowing this is to calculate the projection of the directional uh, vector omega onto the direction towards the detector so let's say that the direction towards the detector uh, is expressed by the omega d and uh, if you calculate the projection of omega onto omega d you will get basically the cosine of the angle between these two vectors so uh, let me denote the projection by mu so when the neutron is flying towards the detector then the projection is 1 if it's flying away from the detector the projection is minus 1 now uh, we may have some other cases of course for instance we have a neutron here and it's flying in this direction and the direction to the detector is here so when we calculate the projection you will have a small positive number in this case for instance 0.1 so you could say that in this particular case the neutron is slightly approaching the detector because the projection of its direction onto the direction towards the detector is slightly positive here so now we know when the projection the mu number is positive we want to decrease the total cross sections when it's negative then we want to increase it so what we can do for instance we can subtract the projection from the total macroscopic cross section and we, we can uh, multiply the mu number by some uh, c factor this uh, c factor should be chosen in such a way that uh, this biased uh, total macroscopic cross section will remain uh, positive no matter which direction the neutron is flying at so for instance it, when it's flying uh, towards the detector the mu number is plus one however we are using the minus sign in front of it so the total macroscopic cross section is uh, reduced so uh, we have to make sure that uh, the biased total macroscopic cross section is positive so the c factor has to be uh, appropriately chosen here so i'm going to denote the biased uh, total macroscopic cross section as sigma t prime and then the biased transition kernel as t prime so it's using the biased total macroscopic cross section so when you bias the transition kernel uh, in this way the neutron histories will start to gravitate towards the small detector and the chance that they will enter the volume of the detector will increase you can see a summary of the method on this slide 
So here is our original transition kernel. Here is our biased transition kernel. You can see that the total macroscopic cross section here is uh, reduced by the C mu factor, where mu is the projection of the particle direction omega onto the desired direction omega d. The C factor needs to be chosen in such a way that the biased uh, total macroscopic cross section remains positive no matter what the direction of the neutron is. Let's have a look at the formula for uh, computing the uh, distance between the collisions. We have derived this uh, in one of the previous lessons for the uh, case when the total macroscopic cross-section was not biased. So that was just this part without this uh, minus C mu factor here. So when we bias the transition kernel, you can see that in the denominator we have this minus C mu. So when the neutron is moving towards the detector, mu is positive. So the denominator here becomes smaller. So uh, the whole number becomes bigger, right? The, the minus here is compensated by this logarithm, which is also negative because the random number is uh, a number between 0 and 1 and the logarithm of a number which is smaller than 1 is negative. When the neutron flies away from the detector the mu factor is negative so the total macroscopic cross-section is increased and therefore the distance to the next collision becomes smaller. We must not forget to compensate the biased neutron transport simulation with the appropriate change in the neutron statistical weight. So every time you sample a new distance according to the biased transition kernel, you have to change appropriately the neutron weight. So here we have the original transition kernel here we have the bias kernel. So we know that every time we sample the distance to the next collision from the biased kernel, we need to change, we need to multiply the original weight of the neutron, that is this W prime, by the correction factor. The correction factor is the ratio of the original uh, probability density function and the biased probability density function. So that is the ratio of the original transition kernel and the biased transition kernel. So uh, that is written here. You can uh, simplify this by combining these two exponential functions together. So you can see that uh, the exponent sigma ts can be removed from here and only the factor c mu remains there in the exponent of the exponential function. And that is all for now. Have a nice day.